To sell digital products on any Apple platform, you are restricted to using in-app purchases. But adding in-app purchases to your project can be quite challenging. Well, not anymore with StoreKit Pro. So today I'm going to show you how easy it is to add in-app purchases to your project with the help of StoreKit Pro. With StoreKit Pro, in-app purchases are finally made easy. It works in Swift UI and UIKit, so the API is really, really simple to use. And also we have a demo project. This is the demo project here that you will get. Uh, you can just uh, purchase a sword, for example, or some coins, some consumables, in-app purchases are also available for auto-renewable subscriptions. You can have access and of course you want to have also a privacy policy and a user agreement link. So this is the project that we are going to take a, a look at today. Uh, you can find StoreKit Pro at store.rebeloper.com slash store minus kit minus pro. It's on my store, go ahead and check it out. And let's take a look at what actually StoreKit Pro adds to your portfolio. Well, it's in-app purchases made easy as I told you a thousand times. It works with SwiftUI and UIKit, it has simple API. The most important part is that there's no server code uh, required. Well, actually, uh, for promotional offers, you do have to have uh, some server port, but most probably that will be added later on into StoreKit 2, which, by the way, is used by StoreKit Pro, and then you will have no uh, server code required at all. Only promotional offers require uh, a server. Now, it works on iOS, macOS, watchOS, and TVOS and when we are going to scroll down here you will see that uh, we have those nice, nice screenshots. So it supports subscriptions, consumables, non-consumables as expected, auto renewable subscriptions, uh, supports introductory offers and also offer codes. Now offer codes are introduced in iOS 16 so uh, this is available only for iOS 16 plus. Uh, easy free step setup and you will see it in just a second how easy it is to just use StoreKit Pro. Uh, purchase only with one line of code that's really important to me to make in the purchases uh, product purchases really really uh, uh, simple one line of code. Handles virtual currency on the fly. Now, uh, if you buy consumables, you know that uh, it's really hard to create your own virtual currency inside your application. Now with StoreKit Pro, you can handle that with ease. And uh, yeah, the demo project also has that. You can easily test purchases within Xcode. You have the ask for refund sheet, manage subscription sheet. Maybe you haven't heard of these, but they are available. Redeem offer code sheet. This is iOS 16 plus again. Uh, uses the modern async await syntax. So yeah, no completion handlers. Thank you for me. I really like the modern async await. Made in Swift uh, 5.6. And on top of the modern sorted to, uh, yes, example project is provided and it's 100% documented. So uh, let's just uh, go ahead and take a look how easy it is to set StoreKit Pro up. First of all, first step is that you need to add in StoreKit Pro. So just drag and drop the fo folder that you have found uh, in your downloads. Then you want to configure your in-app purchases. Uh, and then uh, this is how you would do that. Let's just go under setup. So I already did uh, and inside the demo project. We already have the StoreKit Pro added. And then you want to set up your in-app purchases. Now, usually I would just um, say that you just use your bundle identifier, then a dot and is it a non-consumable and what type of non-consumable is or consumable and what type of consumable it is. But you can just do anything right over here. Uh, the main uh, important part here is that it has to be unique to your application. So this could be anything basically. Uh, just make sure that you have your product IDs set up right over here. Next up, if you want to test this inside your Xcode, so you don't want to, I don't know, go to App Store Connect and set all of this up. Of course, you do have to set this up uh, in App Store Connect after, uh, before you submit to the App Store. But if you just want to test it out in the Xcode, just go under this product, Xcode, uh, uh, it's the store kit uh, file, and then just add your in-app purchases, make sure that of course the product ID is the same, then you add your price, localization, 
coin for example and then bag of coins and then we have some memberships and uh, here we have our introductory offer uh, offer codes spring promo code and uh, yeah basically you uh, might want to set this up for your own because it's easier to test last thing to uh, make sure that testing goes okay is that you go under your addict scheme and then you want to make sure that store kit configuration is selected for your store kit file in our case it's products.storekit and of course this works on all of uh, the platforms uh, ios tvos macOS, watchOS. so of course you need to set uh, the configuration uh, also here now basically that's how you want to set up your apple uh, product ids uh, and then the third step and basically the last step before we are using StoreKit Pro is to configure our StoreKit Pro and that's <laughs> it couldn't be simpler in a Swift UI project you want to go and uh, write in your app initializer you just want to go storekitpro.configure now in a UI kit application you want to do this in a application did finish launching with options and that's it you are starting off with just storekitpro.configure after that and uh, here we have our final step you can just make a purchase now that isn't that easy like you just go product buy. where is the product today we are going to talk about that how you would take that further and set up your project but if you are really interested go ahead and take a look at these actions uh, all of the actions that we have here uh, are really really like uh, nice that you can just build out any type of in-app purchase and just make sure that it is subscribed or give access but we are going to that get into the details soon enough so uh, here are some iOS screenshots let's just scroll down then come some macOS screenshots watchOS screenshots and finally tvOS screenshots so it works on all Apple platforms finally uh, we have our Excel project and also we have a table of contents now this version is version 4.00 iOS 16 plus uh, because there are some iOS uh, 16 uh, specific stuff that I added but it also works on iOS 15 version 3.00 so if you are limited to that or your application is limited to version that version then you can just use this also, please note that if you are not using the iOS 16 uh, specific API, then version 4 will still work on iOS 15 also. So let's just take a look at how uh, you have to use this. So basically, this if you just take a look at this, uh, then you know how to use it. So you just set up the configuration, what I just already told you. Now, here are the StoreKit Pro actions. and uh, as you can see there is quite a lot of them so let's just dive into the project and let's see how all of this comes together in a swift ui application now because this is an api it's not platform uh, specific this also works for ui kit of course you have to set up your ui kit uh, ui for that but it just works uh, right out of the, of the box so let me just scroll all the way down again it's at store.rebeloper.com slash store minus kit minus pro it's the link down in the description okay let's take a look at our xcode project and let's see how it is all set up first of all uh, just a brief uh, reminder of how this looks like here we have the restore purchases button we have this list uh, free sections purchases access and links now uh, because of course we want to navigate the way all of this is uh, add, done inside a navigation stack so uh, we start off with the navigation stack and we have our products view now let's take a look at the products view uh, what do we want to do right over here well first of all we want to before after we configure StoreKit Pro it will just fetch all of our products but we want to actually fetch them inside our view so we want to display them therefore here we have a product state variable it's an array of product of course you do need to import store kit because product is actually a store kit 
class. So uh, we have an array of products. Uh, also, we have did fetch products because I don't want to fetch this over and over again when this view appears because this fetch is done. Let me just move this out of the way so we have a lot of space. This fetch is actually done on the appear. So when this view appears, then we are going to do a task uh, and we are going to try a way to get retrieve our products for the product IDs and we just go store kit pro setup product IDs. Remember, these were the product ID strings that we uh, set up. And uh, if everything went okay, the products state variable will be populated and we set did fetch products to true. So uh, this guard will fail and we are not doing this over and over again when this view appears. Now, where is the actual products? Well, it's right over here. Till we are fetching the products, we are just presenting a progress view. But if the products count is zero, then we say, okay, no products found. That's relatively simple. But what do we do if we find uh, at least one product? Well, we put them inside the list and then we have purchases, access, and then links are different. Let me just take uh, uh, this out of the way. Those are just simple links that uh, link to our privacy policy and of course the user agreement. Make sure that you have that. Now on watchOS and tvOS, there isn't such an external way of linking to sites or uh, these, these URLs. So you want to create your own privacy policy view and user agreement view with, of course, the text of your policies and agreements as, uh, as expected. Okay, so those are the links. Now let's take a look at how we would purchase. So we go through all of the products. We get one product and we have a navigation link. We are going to have this label. Okay, it's, it's, you don't really have to use this, but this is fine. And then we are going to go to the product view with that product. For the access, we are going to check if the product is a non-consumable. If it is a non-consumable, we don't want to give access. It's, it's a non-consumable. Otherwise, we want to navigate to the premium content view. Basically, if it's a... Uh, it's if it's a non-consumable, sorry, if it is a non-consumable or an auto-renewable, then we want to show the premium content. If it's a consumable, we are going to consume that, but we are going to take a look at in just a second. So let's take a look at our product view. Basically, this is it. We got our products and we display all of these. Let's jump into the product view. Now, uh, this is kind of a larger file. We have a lot of state variables, but it all comes down to this product. Um, and uh, what we are doing with these state variables is that we are grabbing uh, this um, information from our product. And we do that when we, again, appear. So on appear, let's just scroll all the way down. We have on appear and on a task, and we just do these uh, has been purchased. We just go product has been purchased. Product has active purchase. Uh, subscription state description. So we grab all of these and you will see all of these inside uh, the list of available information so-called. Has intro offer, renews in-app description, renews at description. And of course all of these are used in these state variables. Okay. Uh, let me just scroll all the way up. So these will be populated. And then what do we actually uh, uh, print out? Well, it's a list. We have an info section. Let's just scroll down. Then we have a uh, uh, buy, kind of a buy section where we want to either uh, say that, okay, we can request a refund or we want to buy because after we buy, we may request a refund. Okay. And um, after that, we still have a section for uh, consumables uh, if the product is a uh, uh, subscription and uh, is a consumable, then we just go in consumables. Otherwise, we go into subscriptions and there are some specific functionality for those two. And those are the three sections right over here. So let's just start by our first section, the information section. Well, the product, it's a product from StoreKit. It does have a description. If the product is consumable, then uh, we want to grab its consumable count. Now again, it was from the information. If it's a subscription, then we want to present all of the subscription state, renewal uh, period, 
renews add and renews in. Now it has, if it has active purchases, this means that uh, we actually purchased that. We will say that this is just purchased. Okay, now section number two. We have a lot of if uh, statements right over here, but bear with me. If we have an active purchase, then we uh, uh, give this button of request refund. It's try wait, Storkit Pro begun, begin refund process for our product, of course. Now, uh, this will say if it has active purchase, then it will say refund. Otherwise, it will say purchase because on the else statement, we have this buy button. It's just a simple buy. Now, let's just jump to definition. It's a little bit down. Let's see what the buy button does. Now, first of all, we want to make sure that is this a consumable or not? So product is consumable. If it's a consumable, then we are going to do this. I'm going to uh, jump in, in this in just a second. If it's not, we just go product.buy. It's simple as that. Now, if it's a consumable, we want to make sure that we are actually purchasing the right amount of the right consumable. And if we have a consumable that let's say has not just one coin, but 10 coins in our example, then we want to buy with this multiplier. So first of all, if uh, we have just the coin, so the consumable ID is the coin. The product IDs are consumable dot coin and bag of coins these two so there are two different consumable product ids now if i want to buy this one then i just go buy consumable uh, custom consumable id just coin that's just it if i want to buy 10 more coins but with a different in-app purchase then i will say buy multiplier by 10 consumer, cons, custom consumable ID with coin. So it all depends on the multiplier. The multiplier is uh, one by default. That's why we are not using it right over here. So you want to have kind of this consumable, custom consumable ID as your virtual currency. Uh, after that, we just want to update our consumable account product, consumable account for coin. That's how we grab our consumable account for that virtual currency. And that's how we buy. It's, it's as easy as that. So let's just go a little bit back. Here we were. We just bought our product. And then we have inside our footer, yeah, so if it doesn't have an active purchase uh, and this is a subscription and if it has an offer, we want to display our offer and uh, what the offer actually states. Introductory offer display description, the display price for the actual product. So this is after the introductory offer and then subscription renewal pre period description. You will see this in just a second when I go into the actual app. Otherwise, we just go for the display price and the subscription renewal uh, period description. And uh, if this isn't a subscription, then I will just go and present our display price. Now, finally, if this is a subscription or it is a consumable, so let's start off with the consumable. If this is a consumable, then we want to add some buttons to consume. How do we consume those consumable IDs? Well, we just go product.consume, consumable ID, and that, you know, coin, that virtual currency. Now, after we have consumed our consumable ID, we, as you can see here, we have a completion. We want to update our UI. So we just go and grab the consumable count from the products, consumable count for our coin. You already saw this. Okay, that's how we consume. Now, we might want to set the consumables back to it, their reset value. So they are default values, basically zero. So for that, I added this in a debug. So this will not appear at all in production, but you can just go StoreKit Pro reset consumables so for custom ID coin. And then of course you want to update the consumable count. Okay, if this is a subscription and please take note that uh, this is available only on iOS. Then you can just show the manage subscription sheet. So uh, again, try away StoreKit Pro, show manage subscriptions. Also, you can show the offer codes redeem sheet with StoreKit Pro, show offer code redeem sheets. If you have some redeem uh, code 
uh, redeem codes, then they will be presented right over there and the user will be able to select one of those. Okay, and uh, the header for this, if it's a consumable, then just consume. If it's a subscription, then you are going to uh, print out the a text of the options. Okay, and um, basically what I have here is on the navigation title is the product's display name. Here we have the buy functionality and pop is basically coming back to the main thread and dismissing our view after we had some, for example, we bought our uh, subscription or whatever in a purchase. That's our product view. And finally, we come to our premium content view. That's what we are presented when we go into access. Uh, this is a little, we have a little logic right over here. So we created a purchase state. Uh, first of all, it's unknown, then it's either active or inactive. So uh, how do we manage all of these? For, for the purchase state of unknown, we are having a progress view. On the active, we just go and display the premium content. Uh, content. In my case, I just display this text. Otherwise, if it's inactive, then I just uh, have an image of a lock. Now, how do we know that this should be active or inactive? Well, when this view appears, I just try wait for the product has been purchased. And if it has been purchased, then I set this purchase state to active, otherwise inactive. But this is really important that we have an unknown because this might take a while, a, a fraction of a second, but still uh, you want to uh, uh, present a progress view right over here. So premium content view, it's really easy. And basically that's it. Now let's take a look at how it all works. Well, for the privacy policy, it's just going to jump to uh, our predefined, uh, basically predefined uh, URLs. Okay, so what about the purchases? Access, let's just uh, take a look at the access. Well, we have that lock as uh, you might expect this for our sword, that's a non-consumable and pro and ultra are subscriptions. Okay, so let's buy our sword first. So here we have our info, a non-consumable item. Let's just purchase it. Let's click on a buy right over here. And because we are in Xcode and we have set that store kit file up, this will work seamlessly in Xcode. So let's just purchase this. There we go. Purchases have been done. Your purchase was successful, okay and then we are taken back. Now, if I go to access right over here, as you can see, premium content for sword. So we unlocked that sword. If I go again into the sword, then you will see that some things have changed, of course. We have a non-consumable item still, but now we have this purchased label. And then if I want, I can just request the refund. So this will be shown. This is uh, an Apple sheet. That's basically, you just want to say that, okay, this is a developer issue or other. Uh, you just want to go through uh, all of the, the steps. Let's just go back. That's non-consumable. Let's take a look at the coins. So we have a consumable item. That's our description. A coins count. So um, that's our consumable count. A buy button, the price of it. And then we have this consume or reset consumables. So let's buy one. Basically, that will be just one coin. There we go. Okay. And uh, if we go back, you will see that coins one uh, has been added. So we bought one coin. Now uh, let's just go back and take a look at the bag of coins. This will add us 10 coins. So let's purchase that. Okay. And uh, if we go either into the coins or the bag of coins, you will see that we have now 11 coins. So let's consume. So if I tap on consume, you will see that it's automatically updating. It's just taking one coin down. Or we might reset the consumables. So let's just go there. Consumables has been reset. So it's uh, at zero. This is again for testing purposes. Uh, this will definitely should not be presented for your users because they will just lose all of their consumable items. Okay. Now, finally, the auto renewable subscriptions. So we have a pro subscription right over here. Currently, uh, it re its renewal period is uh, every month 
and other stuff is missing because we haven't uh, bought it, but we have an offer. We have a free trial for two months. After that, it's $9.99 every month. And uh, uh, we may redeem an offer code. As you can see here, we have our spring promo. Okay, I won't do that. Uh, you might just, just go ahead and check it out. What I will do is buy this. So I will just try it. We have two months for free and then starting at that date after those two months i will just pay 9.99 per month okay let's just subscribe for that okay and now let's see what we have here so uh, first of all subscription state is subscribed period every month we already knew that renews at and re uh, renews in 60 days so basically those are maybe some of the ways that you want to display some information about uh, their in-app purchases to your users of course you have the request refund for a uh, button and uh, also you have now a manage subscriptions button and then you can just again uh, toggle between those two, may, you may cancel the subscription and all of that. Again, this comes from Apple. So this sheet is from Apple. So let's cancel that out. Let's take a look at what we have under Ultra. Well, we didn't buy anything here, so it's still the same. It looks like the same, but you know, we didn't buy anything. Let's take a look at the access. So under Pro, we have premium content for Pro. And because these Ultra, Pro and Ultra are on the same membership, we get access to Ultra 2 because, uh, yeah, uh, you, you can take a look at it. Let me just uh, remind you what we have under here, under products. We have uh, the same membership set up. Okay, there we go. We have this membership and we have uh, our Pro first and then our Ultra first. So it's the same uh, subscription membership. So we will get access to it. Let's just go back to our simulator. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. One last thing you must include besides the links, uh, uh, restore purchases button, and that's right over there. Uh, it's just clicking okay and it will just update that. Let me just show you the code for that. It's under the products view and it's all the way down here on the toolbar, storekitpro.restore purchases. Could it be easier? Now that is how easy it is to set up in-app purchases with the help of Storekit Co. Go ahead and check it out at store.rebelloper.com slash store minus kit minus pro. It's really a bargain. Now, if you do like this type of video, go ahead and check out my previous video about six things I wish I knew about Swift UI before I started. Go ahead and check it out. It's right over here.